Hello, this is Mr. Song. And Mr. Curvis. Okay, here's the last question. Mr. Song runs to Mr. Curvis's house. He runs at the speed of four meters per second. Once he gets there, he realizes that he forgot his calculator, so he turns around and runs back home. He's tired now, so on the return journey to his house, Mr. Song can only run square root of 12 meters per second. If this took Mr. Song five minutes, what is the exact distance between Mr. Curvis's and Mr. Song's house? Okay, so then I'm gonna draw a picture. So here's Mr. Song's house, and here is Mr. Curvis's house. Yes, okay. And we don't know the distance between them, and that's what we're looking for. So let's call this distance D. Good. Okay. On the journey there, I run four meters per second. On the way back, it was square root of 12 meters per second. Yeah. And the same distance covered. So D is the same in both cases because we're going from Mr. Song's house to Mr. Curvis's and then back. Right. And we know it took five minutes total. Right. So, um, so we know that speed is distance over time. And our goal, or the information that we're provided with, is time. There's a little bit of an interesting thing here. So time is distance over speed, in that we're given the final result in minutes, but the speed's in meters per second. So we'll definitely have to deal with that. And meters per second, I would keep, and I would convert the minutes to seconds. That'll keep numbers, that'll be the least amount of work to get to the right solution. Right. Since we don't know the distance, we're just going to keep writing d as our variable. d over uh, speed of 4 meters per second. Okay, so that's the way to Mr. Yeah. Curvis's house. That's how long it talk, took to get here from Mr. Song's house to Curvis's house. Plus, on the way back, the same distance divided by square root of 12. And that's 5 minutes total. So we would multiply 5 times 60 to match our units up. So now we have seconds, meters per second. So when the dust settles, we'll have our answer with the units meters. Right. Okay. So what should we do first here? Whenever I see a third, I always simplify it. That's the first thing I always think about is that root 12. Let's clean it up. You could rationalize right off the front as well. But I think if we break it into a root 4 and a root 3... It'll help us to find the lowest common denominator or what we multiply by in order to clear the fractions. All right. So there you can see that if we multiply everything times 4 root 3, the lowest common denominator, the fractions will disappear and we'll have a much easier equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll pick blue there. Fours will simplify to one, so uh, d times root three plus four root three times uh, d over two root three, so I'll get two d. Good, the root threes cancel, and four over two leaves us with two. And here I have 1,200 root three. Good. Now it's a bit strange. On the left-hand side, we have d in two of the terms, d root 3 plus 2d. The easiest way to isolate d, uh, we can't collect them because they're not like radicals, but we can factor out a d because our goal, remember, is to solve for this d, this distance between Mr. Song and Mr. Kerbis's house. So it'll be square root of 3 plus 2. And now you can easier see that in order to solve for d, the inverse of multiplying is divide, so we can divide each side by root 3 plus 2. Okay, and we're done. Yeah. No, we're not. What about this root 3? Exactly. We never leave a square root in the denominator, so we have a, two terms in the denominator. One of them is irrational. We need to multiply by the conjugate. 
Good use of brackets, Mr. Song. I appreciate that. Thank you. Keeps uh, keeps e things easier, um, organized, and less likely to just multiply the two by the root three, for example. You need to keep those brackets there so that you can clearly see the expansion that needs to take place. All right. So now. 3,600. 3, three times 1,200, right? Root three yeah. times root three gives you three times 1,200, 3,600. Subtract. Mm. 2,400 times root three. Good. An irrational number on the numerator is not a problem. Okay. On the bottom now though, the root okay. three times root three gives us three. Those middle two terms Cancel drop away and we subtract four. Oh, that's interesting. This must be more than 3,600. Exactly, uh -huh. good. So the answer is, uh, well, okay, let's write this way. 3,600 minus 2,400 root three mm -hmm. over negative one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to multiply this by negative one over negative one. Is that okay? That's perfect, because then you can see that we won't even have a denominator in our final answer once we rationalize. So it'll be 2400 root 3 minus 3600 meters. Meters. Excellent. So this would be considered a level, probably a level 6, I would say. When we were putting together the assessment, we would think of that as one of the more challenging because you had to deal with an application and square roots and rationalize um, and fractions as well. 